in the last video, we talked about how maxillary expansion helps with obstructive sleep apnea. And in this video, we're gonna answer the question, well, how do you know if you need maxillary expansion? But before we get to that, I wanna address two things. One thing you might notice, and these are for the people who watch my vlogs, I've got my Invisalign in to help close the gap from maxillary expansion and prepare me for double jaw surgery, which I'll talk more about in another video. And two, we have an overwhelming majority for who voted on what this friend's name should be, and his name is Max, short for Maxilla. And I love it. Uh, his name will forever be Max, and I wanted to give a special shout out to one that was one of my personal favorites I thought was really hilarious, was Terry, spelled with the silent P, just like pterygoid bone. It, it was really funny. So to answer the question, how do you know if you need maxillary expansion? I think it partially depends on why you're asking. Some people, they want maxillary expansion so that they can have better aesthetics to have a wider smile that they might think looks better. Some people want to resolve sleep apnea like me and then other people might want to avoid doing tooth extractions or even wisdom tooth extractions and maxillary expansion can help with all of those things. And so I think it kind of depends and I say it depends on why you're asking because obviously one of the indicators that you might need maxillary expansion is to get a sleep study but a poor sleep study doesn't mean you need maxillary expansion there's many different causes for sleep disordered breathing i think the best way to order this is that i'll just dump all the ways that you can tell if you need maxillary expansion so the first is to measure the width of the maxilla because that's what we're doing. We're expanding the maxilla. And you would typically do that through a scan at your doctor's office. And they'd measure the width of your maxilla or also the width of your nasal cavity and compare it to average. And I think that's a difficult thing to do because everyone might optimally have different sized maxillas. Uh, not to mention that what studies there have been done on average maxilla size is going to be skewed by the fact that this is a very pervasive issue. So average maxilla of the population is, would be, is going to be different from average optimal maxilla width of a population. And it also depends on how you measure it. There's many, many different ways to measure the width of the maxilla and the width of the nasal cavity. Um, but I will at least drop a table here. So if you wanna come back to this, you can refer to it. And I'll leave links in the description for sources of certain papers that have talked about what is the average sized maxilla. That's all something that you have to talk to your doctor for, but there are ways that you can kind of hint at whether or not you need it without a doctor. Let's say you haven't had any consultations yet. This might help you answer some of those questions. Uh, and before I get into the rest of these, I want to say that most people are not at their optimal width of their maxilla. Most people are deficient from what they genetically should be. This is due to a lot of common factors of modern life that affect almost everybody. And if you want to learn more about that, uh, I'll link this video, which talks about why nearly all of us grow to be deformed. The first signal that you need maxillary expansion is any sort of dental crowding, crooked teeth, malocclusion, crossbite. If you ever needed wisdom teeth extractions or any teeth didn't grow in properly, that's a sign your maxilla isn't as wide as it optimally should be. Now, do you need an optimal width maxilla? Is it worth going through these treatments if your maxilla isn't perfect? Maybe not. The severity is where the question lies. But I think that's most of us. A healthy human should, by default, grow to having perfectly straight teeth. Their wisdom teeth will come in just perfectly. They're not going to have any crossbite or dental crowding. That is 
the healthy human. And honestly, that's almost nobody. So depending on how much dental crowding you have, how many extractions you have, that's a really big sign that your maxilla is not as wide as it genetically should have been. And as I explained in the previous video about maxillary expansion, when your maxilla is narrow, it also causes your nasal cavity to be narrow. And so if you have a lot of problems with nasal congestion and poor nasal breathing, then that's another sign that you might need maxillary expansion. Another sign is to look at the dark space on the side of your smile. Now, mine has been dramatically reduced since I've completed my expansion, but I'll throw some pictures up here. This is called your buccal corridor, and a narrow buccal corridor means you have more dark space on the side of your smile. Optimally, there shouldn't be any. Your teeth should take up the entire width of your smile. If you have chronic mouth breathing and low resting tongue posture, these are also signs that you need maxillary expansion. And another one of the terms that's used a lot is if you have a high arched palate. And the concept is this, if your maxilla doesn't grow as wide as it needs to be, and instead your maxilla grows to become narrow, it also typically grows to become high arched, meaning the distance from your occlusal surfaces on your teeth to the top of your maxilla or the top of your palate will be a very high distance. And the idea is when your maxilla isn't growing outward, it's gonna instead start growing upward. So high arched palate. And you can measure that, but that also often causes other things. So when the palate starts growing upward, it starts interfering with some of the anatomy of the nose and the nasal cavity. And one of the things you'll often have is when, the, when you have a high arched palate, it's very common for patients to then have a deviated septum because as the palate grows up and up, it starts to buckle the septum. And so you'll have a deviated septum or septal spurs, and those will all be further signs that you need maxillary expansion. Another one is tongue scalloping. Tongue scalloping is when your maxilla is very narrow and there's not enough space, it cages your tongue in very tightly and starts to leave marks on the edge of your tongue. So if you have these marks, there's another sign that you need maxillary expansion. So those are all the ways to tell if you need maxillary expansion treatment. A lot of these, they're not if and only if requirements, meaning there are other causes of nasal congestion. There are other causes of mouth breathing and low resting tongue posture. There are other causes of deviated septum. So when you look at it as a package deal, hopefully that can give you a better idea of if you're a candidate. But ultimately, you're gonna wanna have a airway focused provider of maxillary expansion that you trust to help you come to a final determination. Well, I hope that helps. Maxillary expansion is something I'm very happy I did. And if this was helpful for you, please leave a like or subscribe and stay tuned. We have a lot of awesome discussions and people end up learning from each other in the comment sections and we're part of a big community and we're all here to learn from each other and help each other and get through whatever we're getting through because ultimately this is, this is a field that is changing very fast. It is very exciting, but at the same time, very scary. So stick around and have a good rest of your day.